Hello there, welcome to my website and uh, the Valent Service Company which I run as an individual in London. As you're probably aware if you're on the website or been to the website you'll see loads of information about boilers, not just this particular one, but this particular one does seem to be particularly troublesome. So uh, to try and stave the onslaught of the relentless phone calls I get concerning this particular model of boiler, I thought I'd make the I'd take the opportunity to make a, a little video while I'm down my granddad's workshop and it's uh, full of these boilers by the way which have been removed and taken out within the last four or five years. So I thought well I'll get one and put it on the bench and hopefully uh, if you see the video it will give you some information and some background as to why you may be having problems with your Valent Ecotec boiler. Now this particular model was first released in 2006 and it stayed in production until 2012 where it was revamped and rebadged, although it's still got the same name, in April 2012 and is now currently on the market. Now, the 2006 to 2012 models had various revisions, which is identified by the date badge where you see R1, R2, R3, so that's revision 1, revision 2, revision 3. So they revised the model as it went on through that period of time, uh, obviously addressing certain problems that the bore had from day one. But it did have quite a few problems. So we're going to have a look at those. Now, I'm not going to go into technical information or technical detail because it's come to my attention that a certain multi-million pound national company has been using my other videos to train their engineers on how to fix vacant boilers. So I'm not very happy about that. So I'm not going to go too mad with the technical information, but I'm going to give you as a consumer as much info as possible to arm you with some information so that if you get problems with it, you can't get ripped off or hopefully you won't get ripped off. Now, the earlier model, 2006, there are two variations, you have an Ecotec Pro and an Ecotec Plus. Now there are minor differences between the two, one of which is easy to tell by the display. Now this is a fully uh, digital display, it's on the Ecotec Plus. If you look at your display and you have little neons underneath it, uh, a green and yellow and red, you have the Pro, okay, which is the basic model, which to be honest, is probably the better one to have because there's less to go wrong. Anyway, this is an Ecotec Plus. Easy way to tell is to look at the display. If you've got little lights there, you've got a Pro. If not, you've got a Plus. So, we're going to have a quick look around the boiler. I'm going to work my way around in a clockwise direction and quickly whiz through all the most common problems that you're likely to get or find with your boiler. Now, we're going to start off over on the right hand side with this thing. Now, I'm going to give that a tap so you know it's metal and it's a big metal vessel with a balloon inside that holds air and it needs to be pressurised extremely regularly. The vessels themselves, I've never had to change one in six years or seven years through failure, I've just had to recharge it and this is a critical part of A, the boiler and B, your heating system. If that isn't checked, set up properly and recharged on a regular basis, it will cause you untold problems with all sorts of weird and wonderful symptoms that people won't be able to sort out or find. This is grossly overlooked by all heating engineers and plumbers. Two reasons, or three reasons, I don't know. One, they don't really understand what it does. Number two, they don't really know how to test it, check it. And three, they don't know how to charge it properly. Now I've seen videos on YouTube where people have made absolute fools of themselves giving it like an instructional video on how to charge it properly and they've got it completely wrong. So, every service, that expansion vessel needs to be drained, pressure checked and then recharged to the correct pressure just to make sure that your heating system works correctly. But the vessels themselves very, very rarely fail. They just lose their charge. Every single Ecotech boiler I go to on any kind of a visit, whether it's a service or a breakdown visit, I walk in with a compressor and a bowl and all the drain hoses because I know that that vessel will be empty or partially charged. So it's just so common, you just do it. Okay, so make sure it's done. Second, pumps. This thing here with the grey face is the original pump that came out on the earlier model. Now that has been revised and changed. Really easy to tell which pump you have simply by looking at the colour of the data badge face. Now, you'll see that this one's grey silver. The replacement pump has got a black data badge or face. So if you look at the two, very easy to tell which one you've got. 
Now that's not to say that the pump will fail, but they did have a very, very high failure rate. Two reasons. A, the impeller mechanism and the armatures inside, for some reason, just disintegrated and fell apart. And the other thing that was really, really common with them is that the seal just at the bottom here, which is under there, would start dripping. Now, this is the bad news. You can't just change this bit, which would be really, really easy, because this is a completely different make of pump. It's a, it's a uh, Grandfoss pump head. The whole body and the mechanism has to come out, which means the whole pump has to be changed. You can't just change this bit. Sorry. And that, being valent, is prohibitively expensive. So there you go. Really sorry about that. Nothing to do about it. you just got to change it. Moving on. Next on the line round the, round the clock, diverter valve, which is this thing here. Not particularly easy to see on the video, but it's there. This is one that I've taken out previously. These, although I find personally, I don't have to change many of these, but they do have a tendency to leak through the central piston or spindle, the spindle rod that goes through to the diverter valve ball, which actually diverts the water in whichever direction you want to go. And this is again really easy to spot because you'd have water dripping down into the chassis and it usually drips out of one of these two corners here on the casing which gives you an indicator that something's leaking inside. Not necessarily always a diverter valve but pretty much guarantee it's going to be something to do with this. Now again, if this goes wrong, there is no cheap easy fix. We've had about two or three modified diverter valves over the last six years. They've now brought out one, one part that does them all. Again, it is extortionately expensive. Uh, I think the retail price is around about £140 just for the diverter valve. So by the time you pay someone to fix it, you're going to be paying at least £250, probably, maybe £300 to get it exchanged. Expensive repair, but again, essential, nothing to do about it. Next, sensors. We have a pressure, electronic pressure and flow sensor here. Now, again, this has been modified three times. Even if, I, whenever I see one of the older uh, kits or sensors that are in a boiler, I just automatically change it. I call it Christmas insurance, because I know you're going to ring me up on Christmas Eve and say, oh, I've got an F75 on my boiler, and I'm going to turn around and say, I'm not working today, sorry. So, as a bit of insurance, don't ever mess around, never ever leave the old sensors in, just take them out, put a new one in, they're 20 quid. Really, really easy. No big deal. Now the sensor plugs into what's called, what I call, a hydroblock. It's a brass multi-section multi where pipes all meet and it goes in different directions. Now inside that hydroblock there is a filter and it's a white comb filter about that long. The idea is, is that any debris or black oxide or anything from the heating system or any contaminants that get into the boiler, this is really weird, it will go around the main heat exchanger and then come out and collect in the filter before it goes into this thing, which is this big silver box here, which is your domestic plate heat exchanger. So they've protected the plate, but they haven't protected the main heat exchanger. And out of the two, price-wise, I know which one I'll want to protect. Anyway, the filter gets blocked up extremely easily and it is a real nightmare to clean or get out. In fact, most of the time you end up breaking them, trying to get them out. Even if you take the whole block out and put it in the sink and do it outside the boiler. So I always carry spares because the nine times out of ten, you're not going to get it out. You just have to change it. Now, that filter will block up the sensor. The sensor will then get blocked up and it will cause you horrific problems with F75s. So, take it out, clean it, replace it, put a new sensor in. Next, hoses. Now here, down this left hand side on the flow connection, and again on the right connection here at the back, we have rubber hoses and Jubilee clips. Now, if you spoke to any service engineer who's worth his salt and said to him, I'm thinking about building a new boiler, and I'm going to put it together with real rubber hoses and Jubilee clips, you are most likely to be wearing your breakfast on the way out of the cafe door. Okay, not a good idea. Now this obviously raised a lot of problems very quickly and it was very quickly revised. Now the hoses do two or three different problems with those. One is they leak. Number two, if you get cavitation, take, cavitation taking place inside the boiler, the, the, because they expand and they can move, the cavitation will blow up the, 
uh, rubber hoses like balloons and eventually they will explode and if they do that inside your boiler it will spray water all over all these very expensive electronic parts which is going to cost you a lot of money and it could even condemn the boiler because more than two or three parts go wrong on a Valent Ecotech at one time it's usually cheaper to go and buy an ideal independent 30 kilowatt combination boiler with a seven year guarantee than it is to buy the parts to replace and repair your boiler. So, hose is really problematic. Next thing is they do tend to leak around the joints where the Jubilee clips are after a while or after a few years. And the other thing you get with it is because anything that's floating around the system finds it hard to stick to metal parts. But when it gets to a nice bit of rubber, oh, it loves it. And if you squeeze those hoses while the board is empty, you will hear them crunch with all the muck and crap that's collected inside of them. And once you do that, obviously that's going to go straight down into the filter and block up the hydro block, so you've got to take all that out. If you get these hoses, take them out. If they're in good condition, you can rinse them through, clean all the muck out of them, put them back in. Not necessarily a bright idea, but there you go. It's the bottom end repair. Alternatively, Valent have graciously supplied you now with replacements which are now like this, which are solid pipes which have a movable joint. You have one for the return and you have one for the flow, which is a great idea. And this is, a, uh, this is the pipe that's used in all the new Ecotex. Unfortunately, to buy these two bits of pipe, is are over under a quid. Whereas you could get new hoses from the Ecomax range of boiler and replace the ones in your existing boiler with those because they're only about 15, 20 quid. So again, very expensive repair. If you've got the hoses, don't be surprised if you get a problem that's related to those hoses at some point. Okay, so hoses. Make sure they're checked and if possible, get them changed if you have a problem in the future. So, I'm going to quickly round up. Expansion vessel needs charging regularly, always get it done. Second, pump may, may not fail. If it does, should be replaced with the ground force. You can tell which one you've got, grey face, black face. Next, divert valves. Have a tendency to leak. Me personally, don't really see that many of them leaking, but you know you've got to do crop up. Next, hydro block and sensor. Sensor, third modified part, make sure it's changed. Second, make sure the hydro block filter's clear and clean. Third, rubber hoses check, replace as and when required, or minimum, rinse out, clean out thoroughly, put them back in again and hope that they don't explode at some point in the future. Last but not least, the main heat exchanger. Now I'm going to quickly pop this off, so hopefully you'll be able to have a better look at it. it takes two seconds so we can see it lovely jubbly. This big silver thing here, the round thing, is your main heat exchanger. Condensing boiler heat exchangers are extremely large surface area, which means the waterways inside are extremely narrow. So it doesn't take much to block that up. If your main heat exchanger does get blocked up, you are in for a major, massive financial kick in the testicles, and it will hurt. This particular boiler is in my, my granddad's workshop for that exact reason, because it was so expensive to replace and rebuild and put this boiler back up to running again, or operation again, that it was actually cheaper to buy an ideal logic or independent boiler, and that's exactly what the customer did. So young Michael went down there, took this out last weekend, and dropped it off in my granddad's workshop for me to play with. So, main heat exchanger, phenomenally expensive to repair. Well, replace because you can't really repair them. Causes this is the crunch. Your heating system needs to be pristinely clean and the water needs to be chemically treated. If you don't do this from the day the moment or the day or the moment that your new boiler is installed, you're going to have a world of pain and a world of expense for the next three or four years and you're probably going to end up changing the boiler. Okay? So, make sure your heat system is pristinely clean. Power flushing, that's a different video. I can talk all day about that. Really, really 
but you need to make sure at least the, the water's chemically treated, it's clean, and you've got some sort of filter fitted to the boiler to protect the whole boiler, not just rely on this silly little filter down here just to protect the plate. So there you go. Probably the most common problems that you're gonna get with your Valiant Ecotec. One other thing. Now I can't show you this because the boiler's on the bench, but the Ecotec Plus comes with a built-in filling loop under here at the bottom of the boiler and they've got two plastic handles that you turn on and turn off to fill the system up using the pressure gauge here which is probably the worst pressure gauge in the world because it tells you absolutely nothing it's a bit like having a buying a brand new car with a speedo with no numbers on it not a lot of good really but it does give you an indication that there is water and pressure inside the boiler so it does have serve a slight purpose I suppose but problem with the filling loop valves now there's nothing you can do about this again other than change them which is a real pain you're better off having an external loop underneath the boiler on the pipework easier to use easier to read and it's only 12 quid if it goes wrong now I've had countless and I mean countless problems with people ringing me up saying the pressure gauge is in the red constantly and that's because these valves don't turn off properly. They're not used very often, and they don't tighten up when you turn them off, they let by, which means water keeps tracking through the valve, so you've got mains pressure pushing its way into the boiler overnight. You get up in the morning, and the gauge is up in the red, and you've got water discharging out the pipe outside because the boiler's over-pressured. There's nothing you can do about this, I'm afraid. The only thing you can do is replace the filling loop valves, and again, to replace them both is nearly a hundred quid. Unbelievably expensive. Personally, I think it's better to try and blank it or cap it in some way and just cut in a normal filling loop underneath the boiler. It can't go wrong, and if it does go wrong, tenner. So, there you go. So there you go, that's it. That's all the, things, all the faults I can think of, at the moment anyway, that you might get with your Valent Ecotec boiler. Very expensive to repair, very expensive to maintain. Um, try and get someone who actually knows what they're doing when they come out to do it, and try and find someone who's actually very familiar with Valent products. And hopefully, you won't have too many problems. And, now you've watched this video, hopefully, you won't get ripped off too much. Anyone want to watch this about the F75 fault code? Yeah. Different video, different day, and um, good luck with that one. See you later. Bye.